Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on tracheomalacia. For introduction, tracheomalacia is a floppy trachea, due to lack of structural integrity of the tracheal wall. The tracheal cartilaginous rings normally extend through an arc of approximately 320 degrees, maintaining rigidity of the trachea during changes in intrathoracic pressure. With tracheomalacia, the cartilaginous rings may not extend as far around the circumference, leaving the membranous posterior trachea wider than usual. It may be completely absent, or may be present but damaged. These abnormalities can result in excessive collapse of the trachea, most pronounced during expiration. Tracheomalacia is the most common congenital tracheal abnormality. It may be congenital, such as tracheoesophageal fistula or bony dysplasia syndromes, or acquired, such as long-term mechanical ventilation. Tracheomalacia must be differentiated from extrinsic tracheal compression by masses or vascular structures. Localized tracheomalacia may persist after the trachea has been relieved of extrinsic compression. For its clinical manifestations, with tracheomalacia, the tracheal collapse may only be apparent during forced exhalation or with cough. It is commonly aggravated by respiratory infections. The airway collapse causes a harsh, monophonic wheeze. Compared to the polyphonic wheeze more often seen in asthma, secretions may be retained behind the segment of malacia, predisposing to infection. Infants with severe tracheomalacia may completely collapse their tracheas during agitation, resulting in cyanotic episodes that resemble breath-holding spells. The voice is normal, as is inspiratory effort. In older children, the hallmark sign is a brassy, barky cough, due to the vibration of the tracheal walls. The expiratory noises of tracheomalacia are often mistakenly ascribed to asthma or bronchiolitis, and the barky cough is often misdiagnosed as croup. For treatment, infants with mild to moderate tracheomalacia usually require no intervention. Tracheomalacia improves with airway growth, as the lumen increases in diameter, and the tracheal wall becomes more firm. The treatment of older symptomatic children is geared toward treating the precipitating cause for cough and providing supportive care. Antibiotics may be necessary to treat concurrent infection. Children, especially infants, with severe tracheomalacia, may require tracheostomy tubes to administer continuous positive airway pressure CPEP, which serves to stent open the airway. Custom-length tracheostomy tubes are used to bypass the site of collapse. Surgical techniques such as slide tracheoplasty may benefit short segments of severe malacia. Aortopexy has been used to limit anterior collapse, but does not treat posterior tracheal membrane collapse. Historically, surgically placed airway stents have been problematic in children because airway stents may erode and migrate, do not grow with children, and serve as a source of fixed stenosis and obstruction. Newer absorbable airway external splints and internal stents with 3D printing technology are under active investigation for treatment of severe pediatric tracheomalacia. That's all for this video. Thank you.